to the Collinsville Sports Complex here in Collinsville. We're right across the street from the Collinsville Middle School. More across the street from the Collinsville Water Plant, but you know where we are. We're in Collinsville at the Collinsville Sports Complex, and the only reason that we ever come to this place is for Cahawk softball, and that's what we have for you today as Collinsville gets ready to take on the team from Breeze and Modern Day Catholic High School. And again, my name is Todd Duke. Welcome into the pregame show. Brought to you today by LC's Pub in Caseyville. Great food, great drinks, and great service served up daily at LC's Pub in Caseyville. 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, just a stone's throw away from Cahawk Stadium. You can give LC's Pub a call for carryout orders. That number is 618-855-9000. Zero seven. Well, the Cahawks come into this contest with an overall record of one and six under their fourth year head coach, Jessica Schmidtling, who brings with her a record of 35 wins and 59 losses. Modern day, they come in with a record of six and four on the year thus far. They are coached by Michael Palm. He is into his seventh season as the head coach of modern day Lady Knights softball and has a record of 87 and 43. So the Cahawks are looking to snap a six-game losing streak as they return home. After winning their season opener 22-2 at Father McGivney, Collinsville has struggled to score some runs. After that 22-run outburst to open the year, the Lady Cahawks have put up just nine runs over their last six games, while their opponents have put up 59 against them. The latest of which was a 16-1 loss yesterday afternoon in a Southwestern Conference road game at Belleville West. Collinsville's lone run came in the fourth inning on a solo home run by leading hitter Bailey Demick. Collinsville only had three hits in that loss. Demick had a uh, had two with that home run and that uh, double and a double. And uh, the other hit belonged to senior Emma Hilton, who is our pregame guest here in just a little while. Senior pitcher Marissa Thomas got roughed off a bit in the uh, circle yesterday, giving up 10 runs on 10 hits with a couple of walks and three strikeouts. Modern Day had their game against Highland postponed yesterday due to wet field conditions and come into today's game on a three-game win streak. That streak started with a doubleheader sweep on the road 
at Mascuda this past Saturday with wins of 10 to 5 in the first game and 6 to 4 in the second game. The Lady Knights followed those two wins with another road win with an 8 0 victory at Carlisle uh, just this past Monday. Modern Day started the season by winning two straight over Alton in the season opener and a win at home over Graves County, Kentucky in mid March. Modern Day played in a tournament down in Marion where they lost three straight games. The Lady Knights broke out of that skid with a 10-5 home win over O'Fallon before losing the very next day 11-0 to Columbia for Modern Day's fourth and last loss so far this season. As I mentioned, had a chance just a little while ago to catch up with Collinsville outfielder Emma Hilton. We will pass that conversation on to you next as the LC's Pub pregame show continues here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Cahawk fans, before, after, or even during Cahawk games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food, like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Cahawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Cahawk fans' pub of choice. At Visionary Wealth Advisors, we empower you to see your future before it's your future. To create your inheritance. To build your vision. To anticipate the known and unknown. And to find potential in both. And build new dawns. Visionary Wealth Advisors. Visit Brad Keen at his Collinsville office at 106 North Clinton or call 618-467-8420. Got vinyl? Rich's Record Emporium in Uptown Collinsville can take care of all of your vinyl needs and more. You can peruse through thousands of records, from country to hard-to-find jazz, and classic rock is always in stock at Rich's Record Emporium. Used vinyl, new vinyl, and hard-to-find vinyl. Don't forget to check out the audio room at Rich's, where you can check out the latest in audio gear, from new top-of-the-line speakers to turntables and receivers, plus all of the accessories. Rich's has t-shirts, record cleaners, turntable needles, wall art, and so much more. If you can't find what you're looking for at Rich's, they will do their best to find it for you. Don't forget to mention seeing this ad on the Chaos Sports Network for a 10% discount at checkout. Rich's Record Emporium, 131 West Main Street in Collinsville, or call 618-795-1333 or online at richesrecordemporium.com. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Cahawk fans, before, after, or even during Cahawk games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food, like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Cahawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Cahawk fans' pub of choice. And we welcome you back into the LC's Pub pregame show here on the Cahawks Sports Network. The sun is out. It's a little bit warmer than it was yesterday for soccer. 
We're going to switch gears now and do a little softball action for you as Collins will get ready to take on modern day. And we begin our senior interviews this day, and we do so in numeric order. First on the list, obviously, number one, Emma Hilton. Senior, fourth year that you've been playing varsity softball for the uh, Collinsville Cayhawks, so congratulations on that. Let's start off by uh, hearing a little bit about your family. Mom, dad, brothers, sisters, and don't leave out the pets. I have, uh, I have a family. I have my, my mom, Pam Hilton. Uh, she's from Collinsville. My dad, Ralph. Uh, I have two brothers, Isaac and Andrew. They both graduated from Collinsville. And... Um, Two dogs, Boone and Cosmo, both Australian Shepherds. I love them to death. Um, that's about it. Probably more than the brothers. Oh, I love them too. <laughs> what do the uh, What do the brothers do? Um, my brother Andrew, he's just about to finish up college at Mizzou, and then my my brother Isaac, he's uh, he graduated from Mizzou and he works for the Columbia um, uh, Parks and Rec. What do the parents do? My mom is a assistant city manager for Richmond Heights, Missouri, and my dad is a science teacher at Collinsville. All right, tell me a little bit about your softball story. How old were you when you got started playing softball, and who's responsible for getting you started playing softball? Um, I think I started probably at three years old playing t-ball, and I, I caught for most of my high school – or not my high school career, but um, my, like, softball career until high school. And I got into that because of my mom, because she played, and just kind of wanted to be like her. Tell me, uh, what's your favorite part about playing softball? Do you prefer the offensive part? You like taking at bats, or do you rather make that dazzling play out in the field? Um, I think it's more about offense. I switched to slapping, and I really like that. And um, yeah, that's new to me, but I enjoy it. All right, tell me a little bit about your stats. I, I did all the adding here, so you didn't have to do any math. Uh, in your career as a uh, varsity softball player, you're batting 250, 28 runs scored, six runs batted in, and 15 stolen bases and only caught four times. So what of those stats stands out to you that you like and which one would you like to fix or make better? Um, definitely the batting average. I mean, this year it's not great. I'm hoping to get that fixed up. Uh, stolen bases, I love to steal on people, so uh, very happy with that. Um, that's about it. All right, let's uh, play the uh, part I like to call my favorite things, which is your favorite things. All right, so your favorite sweet snack. Mm. Sweet snack. I'm, I'm going to go with Bobby's frozen custard. That's pretty sweet. Favorite salty snack. Uh, Cheez-Its. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, which one is your favorite? Dinner. All right, so what is it and who cooks it? Um, it's a steak that my dad made that's my like ideal dinner with like some mashed potatoes can't go wrong with a steak on the grill what is your uh, favorite restaurant to eat in um buffalo wild wings they don't have steak do they they don't but <laughs> how about your favorite steak place uh porters that's a good choice too all right your uh favorite music genre what is your favorite kind of music country okay and your favorite artist or group in the country genre let me think. That's a hard one. Um, I really have to think on that. All right, let's break it down. Old school country first. Uh, old school. Got to go with George Strait. All right, how about new artists in the country genre? Um, Megan Maroney. Okay, don't know who that is. All right, uh, your choice. Uh, what is your favorite, books or movies? Movies. What would be your favorite movie? Wolf of Wall Street. Really? That's kind of cool. You don't read books? Occasionally. Only when you have to, right? Yeah, yeah that's the same as me. All right, uh, tell me a little bit about your future. What is going to happen to you when you graduate in May? I'm going to go to Mizzou to study accounting, and I'll get my master's and my CPA. All right, so you want to be a certified public accountant when you grow up? Yep. All right, that sounds exciting. All right, uh, time for uh, some shout-outs. Who out there would you like to say hi to while you have the chance? My mom and dad, um, I love you. Thank you for getting to me where I, I am today. All right, what's your uh, favorite class in high school? Uh, geography. What's your least favorite class in high school? Mm, 
Science. Let's see, man, I don't really care for it either myself. All right, a uh, little bit of a rough start to this year. You guys got off to a good start with that big win against Father McGivney. Uh, ran into some problems since then. So how do you get out of it? I think we just need to put our heads down and work. That's about it. And get the, get our bats going. All right. Uh, what about moderate day today? You know anything about them that could help? Um, I can't. I don't really remember how it was uh, last year, but I think we just need to get out there with a fresh start and play Kayhawk ball. All right, Emma Hilton, thank you very much for the visit, and good luck to you in your future. Thank you. That is number one, Emma Hilton, on your Collinsville Lady Kayhawk softball varsity roster. We'll take a break here and speak into rosters. We'll set up the starting 10 or 9 for each side, and we'll do that after we take a timeout here on the LC's Pub pregame show on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Kayhawk fans, before, after, or even during Kayhawk games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food, like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Kayhawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Kayhawk fans' pub of choice. Do you have a big land improvement project that requires some outside help? Call Petroff Trucking Company. The Petroff companies have been shaping the metro area since 1975. Family owned and operated, Petroff Trucking Company can do the job and do it right. Hauling, excavating and grading, they do that and more. Petroff Companies also has roll-off dumpster rentals. They also specialize in dirt and rock sales. Petroff Trucking Company can help you develop your land for your needs. Petroff Trucking Company. Check out their website, PetroffTrucking.com, or give them a call, 618-797-6100. Petroff Trucking Company, shaping the metro area since 1975. The Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been a proud supporter of KOXSports.com and the KOX Sports Network from day one. Since 1934, the Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been providing women in the community an opportunity to make a difference with fundraisers and projects, all that go towards helping the needy in Collinsville. If you would like any information on any event sponsored by the Collinsville Junior Service Club, head to Facebook, type in Collinsville Junior Service Club, and then click on the event tab. We thank the Collinsville Junior Service Club for their continued support of the Kayhawk Sports Network and KayhawkSports.com. And once again, we welcome you back to the Collinsville Sports Complex. We're just about getting ready here between this softball game between Modern Day and Collinsville. And here are your starting lineups as promised. We'll begin with Modern Day. They are being announced to the crowd right now. Maddie Hills will lead things off and play shortstop. Avery Tromme will play left field and bat second. Batting third is the center fielder, Katie Hills. Audrey Clark is the designated player batting in the cleanup spot. Avery Wibbles is playing right field and batting fifth. Batting sixth is Emma DeCamper and holding down the duties at third base. Lynn Shirley plays first base and bats seventh. Carissa Rich is behind the plate batting eighth and batting ninth is Allison Willman and playing second base. The designated player, Audrey Clark, is going to be batting for the pitcher and that would be Lexi Kaler. For your Collinsville Kayhawks, when they come to the plate in the bottom of the first, they will lead things off with Lexi Rafalowski. She plays center field, shortstop Katie Bardwell batting in the two hole. Bailey Dimmick is behind the plate doing the catching duties and batting third. Addie Stone is in the cleanup spot and is the designated player for the day. Faith Fairchild is at second base batting fifth. Carson Mode is at third base batting sixth. In the number seven spot is left fielder Ali Velouf. Keegan Edwards plays first base and bats eighth and Lily Porler Parlerberg is batting ninth and playing right field. And Addie Stone, the designated player, will be doing the hitting for today's starting pitcher, Marissa Thomas. That's your starters 
We'll set the defense for you as both teams uh, take the field. But right now we have one more timeout coming your way as the national anthem is getting ready to be played. And we'll be back with first pitch after a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Hi, Purple and White fans. This is Dan Mode, class of 1989. I'm with New American Funding. Myself and New American Funding are proud sponsors of Kayhawk Athletics. As we have great coaches at CHS on all the courts, fields, and tracks, we like to coach you through the home buying process and refinance process. If there's ever anything we can do, I can be reached at 618-973-5343 or www.danmodeloans.com. Let's support our student athletes at CHS. They deserve the best. Thank you for your time and go Kayhawks. Collinsville Barbecue Supply, home of Code 3 Spices, is first responder owned by proud Kayhawk alums. Located at 1966 Vandalia, Collinsville Barbecue Supply is your one-of-a-kind barbecue headquarters that focuses on everything barbecue and cooking. Providing the best American-made barbecue grills, in-person class instruction, smokers, rubs, sauces, accessories, and cooking expertise from professional barbecue experts, including an in-house chef and pit master. Code 3 Spices provides award-winning sauces and rubs that supports our nation's first responder and military organizations that focus on the fallen, suicide prevention, and PTSD awareness. Stop on by, see the guys at Collinsville Barbecue Supply for all of your cooking and grilling needs. Collinsville Barbecue Supply, home of the four-time world champion Patriot Sauce. Learn more about their products and mission in giving back to those who serve at CollinsvilleBarbecue.com or call 618-855-8855. And once again, we welcome you back to the Collinsville Sports Complex here in Collinsville. My name is Todd Duke, almost ready for this softball battle between Collinsville and the Lady Knights of Modern Day High School. On the other microphone is one Mr. Chris Kettler. How are you, sir? Yeah, doing all right. Uh, hopefully it'll warm up here a little bit more as we go along here. Got some wind blowing in on us here, but we're ready for some softball. Not as windy as it was yesterday, though. Boy, that was a wailing wind out of the north yesterday for that soccer game last night at Kayhawk Stadium. Right now, the American flag out in center field, just barely moving, but it is uh, coming straight at the booth, so that means the wind is coming in, and uh, we'll see if that has any effect on today's game. But more importantly, uh, Collinsville, uh, once they yeah. get up to the plate, man, they got to find a way to start scoring some runs. Yeah, and they gave up some runs yesterday, too. So if we can shake that off here, first and foremost, as they're out here on defense. And then, yeah, they really need to start uh, right on the bats here, getting some runs across here. Uh, got some that uh, need to fire it up here and get their bats going. And we got some that are doing a little, doing well. They're doing the heavy lifting. They just need to get uh, some runners on in front of them and drive them in. Marissa Thomas is back in the circle for the second day in a row. And Collinsville, the Lady Cowks, have another game here tomorrow against Edwardsville High School, so uh, they're going to have to uh, find a way to find some uh, pitching success as well as uh, Marissa Thomas got roughed up a bit yesterday. Yeah, it looked like a rough third inning, a nine spot, but it's softball. you got to come back out here the, ne the next day, and then it'll be another tough game tomorrow with uh, Edwardsville. It sure will. All right, Marissa Thomas and her numbers. This is her eighth game played in. It's her seventh start on the year. She has two complete games under her belt. She's one in five. 31 innings pitched and a 5.65 earned run average. And in the circle, she has 30 strikeouts to go along with 17 walks. And the first batter that she will face is going to be Maddie Hills, the shortstop. Maddie Hills is batting 368 on the year with eight runs batted in. She has one double and 14 hits. 13 of those would be singles and just the one double. And we will have a lefty to lead off. Modern day out there in their sky blue uniforms, the sky blue jerseys with the white trousers. They have the uh, dark midnight blue numbers on the fronts and the backs and they have the word Knights written across the fronts of those jerseys and that ball hits the outside corner and is a called strike. So it's a nice start there for Marissa Thomas Collinsville out there in the purple and the gray. They got the pinstripe gray trousers on with purple socks and purple jerseys. The jerseys have white numbers on the fronts and the backs and CHS across the fronts of those jerseys. Defensively for Collinsville, Ali Belief is in left field. Lexi Rafalowski is in center field. Lily Parlberg, Parlberg is in right field as Thomas pitches again and a swing and a shot out into the gap. It's a one bouncer and it's right into the glove of Belief. 
And a single will Next greet up, Marissa Thomas off of the bat of Maddie Hills. Yeah, Hills pops it up over the shortstop's head. And will uh, hit the other way from the left-handed batter. First runner on for Modern Day. So that will bring up the number two hitter in the order for Modern Day, and that would be Avery Trami, the left fielder. She bats from the right side and coming in, batting just 0-8-3. With three runs batted in, and she fouls one back in front of her dugout. Rest of the defense looks like this for Collinsville. Carson Mode at the hot corner at third base. Katie Bardwell at shortstop. Faith Fairchild at second base. Keegan Edwards at first. We told you about Marissa Thomas in the circle, and behind the plate is Bailey Dimmick. So one on, nobody out, and the 0-1 pitch to Trami on the way, and that stays a little high. That'll even the count at one and one. Nice sunshiny day. Not a cloud in the sky. Temperatures... Need to start rebounding a bit as we're only at around 50 degrees at first pitch, but that's still 10 degrees warmer than we were last night at the soccer game. As Thomas is ready with another swing and a miss by Trami, and Thomas is in front of the Lady Knights left fielder, Avery Trami, and a 2-2 two, two count. It's not in front, but even. The modern day keeps the bunt on, trying to move the runner over. There's the 2-2 two, two pitch outside, full count. Softball team was playing yesterday at Belleville West. So it had to be real cold one out there. Oh, yeah. There's nothing around. I could imagine. It was cold last night at the soccer game, and we were in the broadcast booth the whole time. Here's the 3-2 pitch, a swing and a foul ball. That's going to head out of play, and the count will only make three and two. That one almost hit the young lady back in the top row all bundled up in a blanket. Feels a lot better out there in the sunshine than it does up here in the booth, that's for sure. The booth does not get any sunshine into it until later in the day, and that just comes in the uh, one small window. Swing and a miss, and down on strikes goes Trami. And that's one out in the inning. First strike out of the game for Thomas. And that'll bring up Katie Hills. Katie Hills was batting third, playing center field, and she is leading this team in the batting department with a 441 average. Nine runs batted in, has two triples and a double scattered amongst her 18 hits on the year. Only one home run, or excuse me, uh, no, we yeah, have one home run, and that's Lynn Shirley for modern day. Collinsville got their first home run of the year yesterday from Bailey Demick as that pitch misses outside. And Bailey continues to lead Collinsville in the hitting department by a large margin. One ball, one strike to count. One runner on first base. We're in the top of the first. No score as of yet between Collinsville and modern day. Thomas pitches and a chance for Fairchild, but it goes underneath mm. her glove. And around second base and heading into third with no problem whatsoever is Maddie Hills. So the Hills girls get a couple of hits and that puts runners on the corners with just one out. Just got under the glove of Fairchild there at second base. Yeah, spoiled one there. Looks like a good pitch and then just happens to get barely under Fairchild's glove, gets through. Baseball team in action today, too. They're playing at Granite City. We'll keep you updated on that one as we move along here in this softball game as that pitch by Thomas misses inside. So two hits in the inning, put runners at first and third. One out for Audrey Clark, the designated player. The next pitch to Clark, swing and a miss. Clark comes in batting 290 with six runs batted in. Has a triple of her nine hits. The other eight are all singles. Chance for modern day to dent the scoreboard first here in the top of the first. Here's the next pitch. That's outside. Two and one the count. One away. Hills on second base. We got a Hills on the third and Hills on the second. Next pitch to Clark. Strike called yeah. on the outside corner. That's two and two. You, that's what you want to do with the last pitch before that one. Got that drop back in. Clark would like another strikeout, have a chance to get out of this inning with the next batter, and that would be Avery Woobles. Here's the pitch, swinging a little pop fly, and that one's into the glove of Faith Fairchild, and she, she tried to throw the ball to second base, and she got the ball out of her glove, and it just dropped to the ground. Throw over to third base is not in time, and that one gets away from Carson Mode, and that's going to allow both base runners to score. That's a shame with the pop-up out on the infield. You'd figure everybody would stay where they are, but things just didn't pan out that way. Yeah, there's no need for it. Uh, the uh, ball dropping out was after the catch and transferring it over. She could have just 
ate it and then need to fire it into the catcher and the ball gets thrown all around the infield and two runs come in for, for modern day. Two runs come in on an error and with the bases empty, a strike is called to the next batter, Avery Woobles, and Woobles comes in batting 286 with five runs batted in. She has a double to go along with five singles on the year. And here's the next pitch, and that one's outside. One ball, one strike to count. So Collinsville will have to find a way to just shake that off, that two-run first inning thus far, and worry about their own selves at the plate once they come up in the bottom of the first. Thomas ready with the 1-1. Swing and a little pop foul. That one's going to get out of play just barely as Carson Mode gave chase over at third base. And Fairchild's really going to need to shake it off too defensively. Yep. Well, just a couple mistakes here in this one inning, but you got six more. She looks a little frustrated out there, but. Yeah, she doesn't look too happy. Left-handed batter. Wibbles, the right fielder. A uh, pitch from Clark and another foul ball. This one's definitely out of play. A little bit of a wind blowing in. Other than that, just abundant sunshine for the day. Waiting for temperatures to warm up. Supposed to be about 10 degrees warmer tomorrow. And then about 10 degrees warmer than that over the weekend. As temperatures are expected to climb into the 70s for Easter weekend. Here's the one, two. Swinging a slow roller to Fairchild at second. She's been busy. A little underhand toss. And the play goes 4-3 to end the inning, but in the inning, two runs score. None of them are earned on a couple of base hits and no one left on base. We now move to the bottom half of the first inning. Collinsville coming to the plate for the first time here in this game, and we'll be back to tell you all about it in just a moment here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Pack Mail of Collinsville, locally owned and operated by Ryan Combs. Pack Mail can ship anything, anywhere. They treat you like a neighbor because, well, you are a neighbor. PacMail offers shipping materials and containers, private mailboxes, as well as climate-controlled self-storage. Visit PacMail at 407 Beltline Road in Collinsville. Online at weshipstlouis.com or call PacMail at 346-4884. Plumbing or electrical problems? Is your AC or heater on the fritz? There are dozens of companies out there, but do you really know who you're letting in your home? Trust Tiger. Our technicians are clean cut, drug free, and background checked. What other company can make this bold statement? Our 24 hour emergency service will ensure your plumbing, heating, AC, and electric are up and running no matter what time of day it is. Schedule your appointment today. Tiger Plumbing, Heating, Air Conditioning, and Electrical Services. We earn our stripes every day. Welcome back to the Collinsville Sports Complex. Todd Duke, Chris Keller with you. Modern Day puts up two runs in the top half of the first. Collinsville trying to see if they can answer. Lexi Rafalowski will lead things off. She comes in batting 294 with a couple of runs batted in on the year. And she will face Lexi Kaler. Kaler pitching in her fourth game. This is just her second start. And that one's a little low. And in eight and a thirds innings pitched. She has a 6.72 earned run average, and Kaler has 14 strikeouts to 11 walks, so she will give up some walks. Here's the pitch. This one's outside as well. Defensively for Modern Day, Avery Trami is in right field. Katie Hills is in center field. Avery Wobbles is in right field. Emma DeCamper is at third base. Maddie Hills is at shortstop. Allison Willman is at second base. As that one's in there for a strike. Lynn Shirley is at first base. We told you about Lexi Kaler on the mound and behind the plate is Carissa Rich. Rafalowski up in the count, two and one. As Kaler pitches the next, swinging a pop fly. This one is going out to left field and making mm. the catch is Avery Trami as the wind kind of pushed that one from center to left. Well, pitcher's wild on the first two and then comes back with Good pitch after that, and that's what leads Rafalowski to swing at that next one and fly out. That will bring up Katie Bardwell, the shortstop. Bardwell from the right side looks at one high and outside. Katie on the year batting 474 with three runs batted in. She has a triple and four doubles as part of her nine hits on the year. And back-to-back -back doubles in that game that we did last week. Here's a swing and a foul out of play, one and one the count. Now 
not a lot of wind, but whatever wind there is is blowing right into the booth. That kind of cools things off in here a little bit as well. Kaler ready with a 1-1 to Bardwell. That one's in the dirt. And this is by a lot. Drops in right in front of the batter's box. Bardwell looking for something to drive. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Swing right through that fastball. Looking to drive the fastball. Definitely didn't lay off that one. 2-2 two -two pitch on the way. Outside, ball three, full count. Bailey Dimmick, the leading hitter for Collinsville, waiting in the on-deck circle. Or waiting on deck, there is really no circle. Kaler, rocks and pitches. Swinging a foul ball down the third base side. And we'll do it all over again. Got boys volleyball action for you tomorrow at Belleville East. It'll be my first look at the boys volleyball team. Zach Roseman already has live streamed one of those. That was the night that I had tickets to the Blues game with my daughter for her birthday. Swing and a miss by Bardwell. And Bardwell goes down on strikes. And there's two outs in the inning. And here is Bailey Dimmick. Bailey comes in. Batting 619 on the year. Has that one home run she hit yesterday. Seven runs batted in. And she has seven doubles as part of her 13 hits. So over half of her hits have been doubles. She bats in from the left side. Nobody on. Two away. Swing and a miss. She was going for it. Going for it right away. Definitely one of the chaos that is swinging the bat well. Got off to a real hot start. And the next pitch, Dimmick swinging a shot down the first base side, but that stays foul. Addie Stone waiting on deck. She'd like to get a chance to bat in this inning if Dimmick can get on. JV team over on the other field playing Jerseyville today. Then later in the year, I think, uh, what would you say, when East St. Louis comes to town, they'll take on modern day's JV team. Kind of weird, but oh well. Outside, ball one, one ball, two strikes to the Lady Kayhawk catcher, Bailey Demick. Kaler, ready with the next. Swing and a slow roller to second base. They're going to say that's a foul ball. I think she fouled that one off of her foot and it had so much speed on it that it got all the way out to Allison Willman at second base. She put a good swing on him, but it just rolled off her foot. She doesn't seem any worse for wear, though. So the count stays one and two, and Demick lives to see another pitch. Kaler checks her wristband for that pitch. And the righty brings it. Swinging a chance now for Willman at second base. She gobbles it up and throws over to first base for the out. So a one, two, three inning by Collinsville here in the bottom half of the first inning. We will move to the top of the second. Modern Day will come up with a 2-0 lead. Collinsville trying to hold them right where they are at that 2-0 lead, and we'll tell you about the beginning of the second inning after a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. The Collinsville Education Association is a proud supporter of KayhawkSports.com and the Kayhawk Sports Network. The CEA is your partner as they work to ensure quality education for our children. The CEA advocates excellence and equity in public education and represent over 400 educators in 11 schools in both Madison and St. Clair counties. For more information, you can visit the Collinsville Education Association's Facebook page or the CEA's website at collinsvillecea.org. Collinsville High School alumni Stacy Lowenstein, CHS Class of 91, Lisa Bassetto, Sarah Sulke, and Tracy Limp, CHS Class of 94, Tony Geisen, CHS Class of 96, and Kevin Robinson, CHS Class of 99, want to wish all of our Kayhawks a great year. We look forward to cheering you on and supporting you. Work hard on the court and the field, as well as in the classroom. Remember, once a Kayhawk, always a Kayhawk. Hashtag Kayhawk family. 
Your home is where you feel happy, safe, and secure. So if you see signs of foundation problems like cracks or uneven floors, worrying is natural and getting it fixed is crucial. Woods Basement Systems understands. We've been solving foundation worries since 1986. Woods experts have the training and equipment to make permanent repairs. So stop worrying because with Woods, it's fixed forever. Foundation problems don't get better with time. They get better with Woods, the all things basementy experts. Call or go to woodsbasementsystems.com today. Welcome back to the Collinsville Sports Complex. Todd Duke, Chris Kettler back with you. We have reached the top of the second inning. Emma DeCamper, the third baseman, will lead things off here for modern day. And DeCamper comes in with a 286 average, 11 runs batted in, and has a triple as the only extra base hit of her 10 hits so far this season. It'll be DeCamper, Shirley, and Rich. If anyone can get on the number nine hitter in the order, Allison Willman will have a chance to bat. And Thomas pitches, swinging a pop fly. This one's going to go out of play back behind the Lady Chaos dugout down the third base side. So that'll even the count at one and one to DeCamper. Third baseman for modern day. Thomas, she's ready. So is DeCamper. Here's the one one. Outside and high, ball two, two and one. Last day of school here for the Collinsville School District. Tomorrow starts the five-day Easter break. As Thomas is ready with the next, swing and a miss. Nice pitch there, took a little off, and the camper was way out front. He's keeping him high, and then we just bring him down just a little bit. They're just swinging right through it. Two and two the count. Thomas ready with the next, swinging a little Foul tip back to the screen, keeps the camper up there. Little one's tailing away there, so her swing just tips it and not hard to get a good bat on that pitch. So the camper stays alive with that little foul tip. And Thomas ready to bring another one. Mm. Outside, just missed. Full count. Barwell trying to frame it good. Couldn't get the call. I mean, Demick. Demick's catching. Dimmick is catching, you are correct. Bardwell is at short so far. Here comes a 3-2 pitch from Thomas to DeCamper. Swing and a little pop fly to Bardwell right into the glove and there there's an out. There she is, good job covering there. Just make the easy catch. Lynn Shirley, the first baseman, is due up next. One away, top of the second, two nothing in favor of Modern Day. Shirley on the year, batting 190. She has the only home run for modern day so far. Three runs batted in. Here's the pitch. High and outside again. Ball one. Isn't it figure that somebody batting under 200 has the only home run? Yeah, she got one good swing on it. There's a so swing, one. but Alexi Rafalowski patrolling out there in center field has to range to her right just a little bit and takes care of out number two. Well, the wind there is definitely isn't blowing out, so nope, not going to drive that one. Two away for Carissa Rich, the catcher for Modern Day here this afternoon. Rich comes in batting 167 and just has four singles, no runs batted in, no extra base hits. Thomas ready to have a one-two-three inning, maybe. That one's just a little high. Ball one, number nine hitter, Allison Willman waits on deck. Thomas and company would like to keep her there and have her lead off the next inning. Thomas, ready with the next, and that one's outside. Two and oh, the count to Carissa Rich. Thomas. Wants to give her a strike, give her something to swing at. There you go, swinging a foul ball out of play. That one. Swinging 0-2. Yeah. That one almost had enough juice to get out to center field of the JV game. So 2-1 the count, too rich. Demick looking over to her bench, gets the sign, relays it, and a swing and another foul ball off of the glove. 
of Keegan Edwards at first base. Edwards almost got there and could have caught that one for the third out, but just a foul ball and the count now two and two. Reaching her glove out there. She was still standing in fair territory. Might have made the ball fair if it glanced off her glove. That didn't, not the case. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a chance for Bardwell, but that's going to go right past her glove and into center field for the third hit of the afternoon for Modern Day. Too much ground to cover there. Bardwell yep. playing a little more over towards third base. Number 13 comes in to run. I that would be Riley Orolvis. Like Rolvis, a sophomore, coming in and doing the courtesy running for Rich so he can go back to the dugout and put on the tools of the catcher. That will bring up Allison Willman, the second baseman. Willman on the year, batting 192, couple of runs batted in, one double as part of her five hits on the year. So Thomas would like to get out of this inning with no further damage done. And the pitch, high, ball one. Thomas is ready with the next, swing and a foul ball. And that'll even things out at one ball and one strike. Two outs, runner on at first, two nothing in favor of modern day. Lady Knights got two runs. In the first inning off a couple of base hits, but both of those runners scored on infield throwing errors. Thomas ready with the 1-1. Swinging another foul ball down the third base side and into the crowd that's brought their lawn chairs. Stands are almost empty. I think there's more people sitting in lawn chairs than sitting in the stands. You don't want to sit on them cold bleachers. Yeah. Those aluminum bleachers do get chilly. Sunshine helps, but then you have that wind that goes underneath those aluminum bleachers and that kind of counteracts everything. One ball, two strikes to count. Two out, runner on first base. Thomas is ready to deal once again to Allison Willman, the second baseman. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss and down on strikes. Goes Willman, second strike out of the game for Marissa Thomas, and they hold modern day to no runs here in the top of the second inning. We will move to the bottom half of the second inning. Collinsville looking to get some base runners on board, and we'll be back to tell you all about the bottom of the second after a timeout here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Just because we're adults doesn't mean we don't have toys, am I right? If your adult toys consist of boats, campers, or RVs, then you need to call the GASA storage team of professionals. Winter weather in the Midwest can be quite harsh, and finding a place to properly store those expensive toys for winter can be just as rough as a Midwest winter. That's where the GASA storage team comes in, with outdoor self-storage and covered storage for your toys. They even have tractor-trailer parking. Conveniently located at Horseshoe Lake Road and 111 in Pontoon Beach. GASA storage for the safe storage of all of your toys. Contact the GASA Storage Team, GASA Storage at gmail.com, or call today, GASA Storage Team, 618-797-6100. Addie Stone, the designated player for Collinsville here this afternoon, will lead things off here in the bottom of the second for Collinsville. It'll be Stone, Fairchild, and Mode here to bat in this bottom of the second inning. Collinsville trailing two to nothing, and the first pitch misses to Addie Stone, who comes in batting 250 with four runs batted in, has a couple of doubles. Addie Stone has four hits on the year, and two of them are doubles. Here's the pitch inside. Ball three, three and oh. Yep, we have our right here. need our first base runner for Collinsville. Maybe this is it. Stone looks and takes a strike. Looking all the way. She had no intention on taking that bat off of her shoulder. Yeah, make her, make her throw you at least one strike. Yep. Let's see if we can't come and attack this pitch. That one's outside, and Collinsville has their first base runner. It is a walk up, to Addie Stone. Faith, faith. Here is Faith Fairchild coming to the plate now. See if Collinsville can get a little something going on here. 
Fairchild comes in batting 238 with four runs batted in. Fairchild also has a couple of doubles. One here would be nice. Swing and a shot down the line, and just that one's foul. just foul. That first bounce was in fair territory, but the second bounce took it on the wrong side of the third base bag. Oh, so close. Yep. Really spoiled the pitch there and tried to get it down the line there, and mm, just one foul. So now the third baseman, DeCamper, hugging that line just a little closer now down there at third. This one misses high and outside. Ball one, one ball, one strike to count. Runner on first base, no one out here in the bottom half of the second inning. Collinsville looking to claw together a couple of runs here to at least tie modern day. Got to get that first one first, though. Swing and a slow roller that's stabbed. Nice play over there by DeCamper over to second for one, not in time on the relay for the second out. So the play goes 5-4 on the first out. And Fairchild will reach on the fielder's choice. So one out, runner stays at first base. And that'll be up to Carson Mode to move things along here. The Kaox third baseman Mode comes in batting 118 with one run batted in. Has a double and a triple and no singles. So she only has two hits on the year and both of them are extra base hits. Take anything here to keep the line moving. Yeah. Modern day got the out, got the lead runner. That was a nice stab over there by DeCamper. Yeah, the way the ball was rolling on the ground, that was tough to stab at that one like that and be able to fire to second base to get the lead runner. 0-2 to Mode. Pitch on the way, high and outside. Out of the hand of Lexi Kaler, spelt with a C, C-A-Y-L-O-R. Kaler checks her wristband as everybody up at the, uh, there's a foul ball that's going to be caught by the first baseman, Lynn Shirley. So Mode pops up in foul territory. Good thing Fairchild wasn't moving with that one. Could have been an easy double play for modern day. So that'll bring up Allie Vilaf. Vilaf on the year looking for her first hit. Strike on the outside corner. Keegan Edwards waits on base. Faith Fairchild is at first base. Hoping to get moved over here. Here's the 0-1 outside, 1-1. One and one. <clears throat> Doesn't really seem like this pitcher really comes inside on anybody. Just everything kind of right in the middle or on the outside. Here's the 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss by Vilaf. Vilaf, one of a handful of freshmen on the varsity roster. Saw her pitch in the last game that we did here. Today she's playing left field. And the pitch by Kaler is a little high and outside. Playing left field, that's usually where our pregame guest, Emma Hilton, plays. She played yesterday, gave her the day off today. Two and two the count. Kaler. Brings it, swing and a miss, and that's going to end the inning for the Lady Cahawks at the plate. So they'll strand a runner for the first time here in this game after the walk, and that was a leadoff walk of Addie Stone, but it did not come around to hurt Modern Day. We will head to the top of the third inning, and Modern Day will come to the plate looking to add on to their 2 nothing lead. And Collinsville, well, there we go again with that thing. Top of the third is where we are, computer. And we'll be back here to tell you all about the new inning after a timeout here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Old Herald Brewery and Distillery in Collinsville produces their own spirits and beer on site right at the restaurant. Pair that with some of the most unique menu items around the entire metro area, and you can see why they are such a hit. They can handle you and your family, or they can handle you and your group. Throw in the occasional live entertainment, and you can see why Old Harold Brewery and Distillery is a must-stop destination in Collinsville. Old Harold Brewery and Distillery, 115 East Clay Street in Collinsville, 618-855-8027 or online at oldheraldbrewing.com. Looking to buy a new home or sell your current home? Trust the Blaylock Group of EXP Realty with all of your real estate needs. 
The real estate market is hot right now, and you can trust the years of experience the Blaylock Group brings to the table. The Blaylock Group can help you find your dream home, or they can help you get top dollar for your current home. Give Peyton or Emily Blaylock a call today at the Blaylock Group of EXP Realty, 618-780-4622. That's 618-780-4622. The Blaylock Group of EXP Realty. Maddie Hills, the leadoff hitter for Modern Day, will get another chance to lead off an inning. She led off the first, and now she leads off the third inning. And in the first inning, she singled, came around to score on one of two errors committed by Collinsville in that first inning. That's how Modern Day has a 2-0 lead. Marissa Thomas, ready with the 1-0. That's outside, and it's quickly 2-0. Baseball team up 3-1 in bottom of the second over in Granite City. Nice to hear. Thomas rocks and pitches. Swing and a chance for Fairchild. She stabs it on one knee, throws over to first base for the out. Nice play by the Cahawks second baseman, Faith Fairchild. Great job. I think a little sigh of relief from her that she was able to yeah. uh, stab at that one, going to her right as she's kind of close to the first base side and made the play. That will bring up the number two hitter. That would be Avery Trame, the left fielder, who was a strikeout victim her first time up. And she looks at one outside. One of two strikeouts so far in the afternoon for Marissa Thomas. We're in the top of the third, modern day. Two runs in the first. That's the only run so far in this game. Two nothing in favor of the Lady Knights. That one's on the outside corner for a called strike. One ball, one strike to the count. ready for some warm weather, and we're going to get that Saturday for that baseball game. I know it's an 11 o'clock first pitch, so it's not going to be 74 degrees by then, but that'll be a nice start. We're almost finished with the month of March. Time to start warming things up here. One ball, two strikes to count, and the next pitch just missed the outside corner, two and two. I don't think any days except for the, that one Monday was a little close to too cold to play. A lot of teams canceled, but Collins yeah. played. And yeah, they did. Softball, but other than that, the weather's been pretty good, and there's a strikeout. Strike three, back-to-back -back strikeouts of Trami. First one swinging, this one looking. And the third strikeout of the game for Marissa Thomas. And with nobody on, that'll bring up Katie Hills, who singled and also came around to score on the two infield errors by Collinsville. So Thomas looking for a one, two, three inning. That one's outside, ball one. Lefty, righty, lefty, the first three in the order here for modern day. Thomas ready with the 1-0, -oh. here it comes. High, ball two. Everybody's got the batter pretty much played straight away. Infield, outfield. Here's the 2-0 pitch. That one hits the outside corner for a called strike, 2-1. and one. Say a little patch out there in center field. That's where Lexi moves back and forth. Must be. <laughs> it's like a perfect path I know. in front of where she's standing. <laughs> yeah. Here's the next pitch. Swing a foul ball that just trickles away from home plate. That'll even the count at 2-2. Two and two. So Thomas, one pitch. Away from a 1-2-3 inning and leaving Audrey Clark on deck. Nice to get a quick 1-2-3 inning. Get back in the dugout. Maybe do some hitting of their own. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Just Ooh. missed the outside corner. Just missed. Got it on the last batter. Strike called. Struck her out. Count goes full. Thomas with a long look into Demick. Rocks and pitches. Stays high. Yep. No one, two, three inning. Had a chance for a one, two, three inning last inning as well. That pitch just didn't drop in at all, stayed high. And that's the first walk issued by Thomas and that will bring up 
Audrey Clark, who popped up into the glove of Faith Fairchild, but then Faith trying to get the ball out of her glove and backhand a pitch over to second base was the first error, and then the throw home. And Demick threw down to third base, trying to get Katie Hills down at third base and threw it off the bag. So Katie Hills once again on the base pass. She's down at first base, two away. And the 1-0 pitch on the way. Allen's a called strike. And leaving the count at one and one to Audrey Clark, the designated player today for modern day. Got folks in lawn chairs sitting out in home run territory as well. Here's the 1-1, swinging a high fly ball, and this one is floating, 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 and a nice catch in foul territory by Carson Mota. I know you couldn't see it, but she caught that ball right up against the fence, and that is out number three, handled by Carson Mode at third base, so no runs come across for modern day. They'll strand their second runner of the game, and we will head to the bottom of the third inning. Collinsville looking for some base runners themselves, and we'll find out if they can accomplish that feat when we come back from a commercial break here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Lottie's Cafe offers food, cocktails, and gaming in a great atmosphere highlighted by fast and friendly service. Lottie's Cafe also offers a unique menu that features soups and salads, sandwiches and paninis, pizza and flatbreads, appetizers and desserts, as well as breakfast. That's right, we said breakfast. Unique breakfast items, such as a breakfast stromboli, a breakfast BLT, and breakfast burritos. Lottie's also offers creative cocktails, a wine bar, the coldest beer around, and a video gaming area for those 21 and older. And don't forget the Lottie's Cafe gift certificates. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Check them out online at Lottie'sCafe.com, on Facebook, or in person in the Strip next to the Walmart Neighborhood Market. Or call Lottie's Cafe at 618-223-8256. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Keegan Edwards will get her first chance at the plate here this afternoon uh, against Lexi Kaler. It'll be Keegan Edwards, Lily Parlberg, and then back to the top of the order and Lexi Rafalowski here in this inning as Edwards takes the first two out of the strike zone. Keegan on the year batting 167 with four runs batted in. And with a 2-0 pitch on the way, swinging a little shot that's gonna fall and off of the glove of the right fielder, Avery Woobles out there and that allows Edwards to make it all the way to second base on what would have been just a routine single. So. A single and an error on the play. A right fielder really came in charging at that one. I don't know if she had any grand thoughts of maybe trying to throw out Edwards at first. If she did, allow the ball to get past her in the air. So Collinsville gets their first base hit and the runner at second base. Keegan Edwards trying to move her around is Lily Parlberg. Parlberg looking for her first hit on the varsity team this year. This would be a nice time for it. Squares around to bunt, takes it back, takes the ball outside. That'll even the count at one and one. Interesting to see what signs do here. You might want Paul Berg to kind of swing through, but it'd be nice to move the runner over also. One one pitch on the way. Squares around to bunt again and takes a strike. I think that one nicked the bat. I don't think she's one you would normally want to be bunting. As that last bunt just kind of just wasn't exactly the best effort. Now swinging and a pop fly. This one's in foul territory, giving chase just out of the reach, just over the fence from Lynn Shirley. She was in the right spot, but it just got over the fence by about a foot. Yeah, if it would have been over to the part of the fence that's a little lower, she might have just been able to reach over and grab it. Yeah. About three feet to the left. Taylor Robert is warming up in the bullpen for the Lady Knights. Here's the one, two, and that one's a little low. That'll even things out at two and two. Yeah, had some action down there. She was throwing while Modern Day was batting. Just trying to stay loose, or maybe uh, Kayla was on a short leash today. Here's the two, two. Swinging on a little pop fly. That one's gonna drop into the center field area. Nice try by Katie Hills and Faith Fairchild 
would had to stand at second base because she wasn't sure if Hills was going to catch up to it or not. But back to back hits have put runners on first and second for Collinsville for Lexi Rafalowski, who flew out to left field her first time up. Hills just about got to it. She just about. Split second, another step in, and she would have uh, made that catch, and Edwards couldn't go anywhere. She was stuck on second base. Rafalowski takes one on the outside corner for a called strike. Rafalowski, usually one of those slap hitters who will just slap the ball down the third base side, but she's looking for something a little meatier this time around. <clears throat> Here's the next pitch to Rafalowski, squared around a bunt, took it back, took a ball. One ball, one strike to count. Two runners on for Collinsville. Those would be the tying runs. Fairchild, or excuse me, Edwards at second base. Parlberg at first base. I might have said Fairchild earlier. Uh, my mistake. Next pitch, bunt. Right back to the pitcher. Only play is over to first base, so Rafalowski does her job and moves the runners over into scoring position. And with her speed, she was only about a half a step yep. away from being safe herself. Yeah. But... Great job by the eight and nine hitters ahead of her to get on base and and move her over here. Now Bardwell and Demick will have their opportunities to drive runners in from scoring position. So first up is Bardwell, a strikeout victim her first time up. She looks at one outside. Ball one. Need one of those Katie Bardwell doubles to tie this thing up. If not, Demick's really swinging the bat well and she might get a good opportunity to do something. Swinging a foul back to the screen off the bat of Bardwell. We'll even things out at one and one. How about a shot down the first baseline into the corner? Down there where the pitcher is warming up. Here's the next pitch. That one's a called strike on the outside corner. So Kaler ahead in the count. One ball, two strikes to Katie Bardwell. Runners on second and third, one away. Taylor continues to live outside, outside, outside pitches. Swinging a foul ball, taking it on the outside portion of the plate again. Bardwell sends it into foul territory. Count remains one and two. Kaler looks at her wristband, has the sign. Here comes the one-two to Bardwell, and that one's a little low and inside. One of the rare times that yeah. Kaler has come inside. She tried to... Switched up there, trick Bardwell a bit, but that one stays low. Two and two the count, two runners on, one out. Here's the next pitch to Bardwell, swinging a foul ball down the third base side this time. Bardwell got that one in on the hands, sent it down the third base side. Two and two, one out. Edwards at third, Parlberg at second. Bardwell up to the plate, trying to keep that line moving. Another 2-2 pitch on the way, swing and a miss, and Bardwell down on strikes for the second at bat. So now it's up to Bailey Demick. Second strikeout for Kaler. Demick rounded out to the second baseman, Willman, in her first plate appearance. Demick looking for something to drive here. Here's the pitch. Strike call on the outside corner. Surprised him. Pitch to her, I thought it might have been just a bunch of junk outside and low, but first one drops in for strike. Next pitch to Dimmick bounces in front of home plate. That'll even things out at one and one. Dimmick with runners in scoring position. Two outs, two on, 1-1 one, one the count. And the next pitch to the Cahawk catcher is a swing and a shot right into the glove of the shortstop, Maddie Hill. So Collinsville threatened, but we're just a little bit short and coming up with anything good as Collinsville strands two base runners. That's three left on base here in this contest thus far as we move now to the top of the fourth inning and the score remains modern day two, Collinsville nothing, and we'll be back in just a moment here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Chapman Trucking LLC. Chapman Trucking is a local Collinsville business owned and operated by 1994 Collinsville graduate Christy Chapman. With over 10 years of experience, 
Chapman Trucking LLC can take care of all of the heavy lifting when it comes to hauling aggregate materials such as sand, driveway rock, dirt, boulders, and more. That includes getting your heavy work equipment to your work site where it needs to be. Give Christy a call for a free estimate at Chapman Trucking LLC, 618-960-9346 or online at chapmantruckingllc.net. Todd Duke here, proud member of the Collinsville Educational Assistance Association. Whether you call us teachers' aides, paraprofessionals, or educational assistants, it all comes down to one thing, taking care of students. More importantly, your student. Yes, we are there for the teachers, and we help them in any way possible. But our goals are in line with our teachers in that we want to see our students succeed at not only being a student, but well beyond that as we ready them for the world outside of the classroom. We are Union Strong. We are Cahawk Strong. We strive to help students reach their potential. We are the Collinsville Educational Assistance Association. Go Cahawks! Mike's Automotive in Collinsville is a T3 certified tire dealer and so much more. Sure, Mike's Automotive has tires. They can also help with making sure your entire vehicle is road ready. From belts and hoses to preventative maintenance like oil changes and tire rotation. Plus a lot more than that. Mike's Automotive has three locations to choose from. Mike's Automotive in St. Louis and Milstadt and Mike's Automotive in Collinsville at 1150 St. Louis Road, just blocks from the high school. Or call Mike's Automotive at 618-345-0611. Mike's Automotive in Collinsville. Avery Woobles greets Marissa Thomas with a base hit through the right side of the infield, and that's how inning number four gets underway. So Woobles is already on, and here is Emma DeCamper trying to move the runner over. It's a pop fly, and this one's in foul territory, giving Chase as Edwards, but that's uh, about four feet over the fence. Woobles went up there, first pitch swinging. Yeah, both batters did. Uh, second time through the lineup here. A little less guessing, and they see something they like. Here's the 0-1. Swing another pop foul, and this one going back behind home plate and will land on top of the modern-day dugout. Bring this ball back in. Yep, popped off the dugout and stayed in the field of play. Thomas is ahead in the count to the Lady Knights third baseman, Emma DeCamper, and this one misses high and outside, ball one. Runner on first base, nobody out. Modern day already leads two to nothing. Collinsville wants to keep it right there where it is. Thomas pitches the one-two pitch, and that one's on the inside corner, and <laughs> down on strikes goes DeCamper. She didn't like it. That's a heck of a pitch. Sure was. Just curved in there. Caught the corner. Fourth strike out of the afternoon for Thomas. That'll bring up Lynn Shirley, the first baseman, who flew out to Rafalowski in center field her first time up. And the pitch from Thomas. Swinging a chance for Bardwell. Underhand over to second base for one. Not in time over at first base. Cahawks almost got a double play. Took a minute for Bardwell to get that ball out of her glove. Yeah, she nearly got it on the fly, too, but had to snag it out ground make sure she had it and then it was a little bit of a foot race between Edwards and the runner coming in from first so two away Shirley now at first base reaching on the fielder's choice as Carissa Rich the catcher is up next she singled and was stranded in her only plate appearance in the second inning and a pitch that's inside strike one Runner at first, two down. Chance for Collinsville to get out of this inning with no further damage done. Here's the 0-1. That one's inside as well, but off the plate, one and one. Top of the fourth, two to nothing in favor of Modern Day. Two runs in the top of the first. As Thomas is ready with a 1-1, swing and a chance for Fairchild into her glove over to first base for the out. So the leadoff base hit does not come back to haunt the Lady Cahawks and some good defense there. Yeah, that inning. Well, some good defense there. So another runner stranded on base for modern day. That's their third runner left on base. We will head now 
to the home half of the fourth inning. Collinsville trying to string some hits together and get some runs on the scoreboard. We'll find out if they can do that after we come back from a timeout here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Keep your ride shiny and clean with Extreme Details Vehicle Detailing in Collinsville. Owner Jay Merkel and his crew at Extreme Details believe in the value of community and in helping their community hold the value of their vehicles with a sharp-looking, clean ride that you and your community can be proud of. Extreme Details can handle any job, whether you drive a small car, an SUV, or even a bus or RV. No job is too big or too small at Extreme Details. Extreme Details offers scratch and oxidation removal. No matter what you drive, cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, and more. Plus, Extreme Details can handle fleet vehicles for you and your company. Call Jay and the gang at Extreme Details at 618-977-1224. Check for periodic specials on the Extreme Details Facebook page. Put the shine in your ride with Extreme Details, 618-977-1224. We welcome you back to the Collinsville Sports Complex, and we have a new pitcher as Audrey Clark will come in and take things over for Lexi Kaler. Audrey Clark in the batting order as the designated player in the cleanup spot, so she'll come on to pitch now. And for Clark, this is her second game pitched in. She has started two previous games, has one complete game. She is 0-1 on the year with 31 innings pitched. She's given up... 11 earned runs with a 2.48 earned run average. And Clark, one of those uh, pitchers that likes to throw strikes, 61 strikeouts so far on the young season to go along with 21 walks. So she will uh, deal some strikes, that's for sure. Number 33. Fireball or maybe here. The the change it up here for the Cahawks. Second time through the lineup. Addie Stone will get things started. Collinsville's designated player also batting in the cleanup spot. That would be Stone, followed by Faith Fairchild and Carson Mode here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Clark is ready with the first pitch for her game and a swing and a miss by Stone on a pitch that was inside. Kind of in on her hands on that one. Cox hadn't seen much inside. Last pitcher was definitely pitched a lot of them way away. Clark, another righty. She's ready with the next pitch, and that one misses. One and one. Hedrick sets up outside, but that one does come straight across the plate, but low. Clark, she uh, has a fireball for a fastball there. One ball, one strike, the count to Stone. Here's the pitch. Inside, called strike. Stone jumped back like it was going to hit her. That inside strike has been called all game. It just because the modern day pitcher wasn't going for it much doesn't mean it's not going to be there. Ooh, that one's inside as well. I'd get out of the way too. That one looks like it's coming in at about 75, 80 miles an hour. Collinsville back here on this same field tomorrow against Edwardsville. Zach Roseman and Chris Keller will have that call for you on the Cahawk. Broadcast Club Student Network YouTube channel. They'll do the softball game, and I'll have the volleyball game from Belle Belle East. Full count to Addie Stone. Clark is ready with the pitch, and here it comes. Swinging a foul ball. Stone stays alive. I guess that uh, Modern Day already had plans to only pitch Kaler for three innings because they had pitchers warming up in the bullpen almost the whole time she was in the circle. Yeah, they didn't get their game in yesterday, so maybe yeah. they were trying to get, to the, get this round, get a lot of pitchers in as that's ball four. Yep, walk to Stone. Kaler only walked one while she was in there. And now Clark walks the first batter that she faces. And Faith Fairchild. I going to bring a runner in here for Stone. Probably. Mason and Hilton are on the bench. And Emma Hilton will come in, our pregame guest. We'll get a chance to run the bases here in this game. Emma Hilton. It was nice calling, now nice talking to her. I said, are you ready for your uh, 15 minutes of fame? She's like, I'm already famous. Oh, okay. Ah, there you go. <laughs> 
famous in these parts. Yeah. Wish I was famous. Yeah, probably not all it's cracked up to be. There's the first pitch to Fairchild. That's on the outside corner for a called strike. Faith reached on a fielder's choice and was stranded. That was in the second inning. Carson Mode waits on deck. Hilton at first base says she likes to steal bases. We'll see if she wants to do that here. Swing and a miss, and down in an 0-2 hole is Faith Fairchild. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities. Hit not too many hits yet for her, so she hasn't been able to get on base, but definitely will have this opportunity coming in as a pinch runner. Yeah. 15 steals in her career, only been caught four times. Here's the pitch, and that one almost hit Fairchild. Let it hit you, don't do yeah, I see. matrix moves. Let's yeah. get some runners on base now. Thrusted those hips back and got out of the way. Take one for the team. <laughs> one ball, two strikes the count to Faith Fairchild. Hilton over at first base, nobody out, and the next pitch on the way in the dirt. Bounced in front of home plate. That'll even things out at two and two. Who was that? Corbin Burnson played him. He was the uh, on Major League. Take one for the team, Raj. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dorn. Dorn, yeah. Roger Dorn. 2-2 the count to Fairchild. Clark's ready with the next pitch. Here it is. Another foul ball, and staying alive at the plate is Fairchild. Okay, Hawks went down one, two, three in the first and the third. They had a uh, opportunity in the uh, second. Actually, they didn't go down one, two, three in the third. They went down one, two, three after the first two runners reached. They stranded two runners in the third. They stranded their only runner they had in the second. Trying not to repeat that fate here as we have a runner at first. Nobody out. And the 2-2 pitch on the way. Oh, strike on the outside corner. That was well off the bag and safe. Back at first base was Emma Hilton. That was close. Yeah, she was way off the bag there, and the throw came. Good job diving back in. Just got safe. So, a out in the inning. That was a... Uh, Tough strike to take there, man. I would have taken that ball as well. One out, run, runner on, and here is Carson Mode who popped up in foul territory to the first baseman Shirley and her only at bat, and a bunt that was more of like Carson Mode protecting herself as that was way inside, and it ended up on top of the modern day dugout. That one really lobbed in towards it there. Drop the bat back and maybe it'll hit you. <laughs> yeah, we just want people to get hit, don't we? No, not really. 0-1 the count to Carson Mode. And the pitch from Clark on the way. Outside, Mode laid off. One and one. Good job laying off that one. Looked a little meatier out, out the hand, but it was way low. One ball, one strike the count. Runner on first and one away. And the pitch from Clark to Mode on the way. Inside. Allie Veloff waiting on deck. Carson Moe trying to move Emma Hilton around. Next pitch from Clark to Moe. The 2-1 pitch is on the way. Bunt and another foul. This one goes up against the fence in front of the Lady Knights dugout. Two and two. Flag out in center field, moving a little bit more than it was earlier. I think it had gotten tangled up, so yeah. it was a little misleading. That one's inside, full count to Carson Mode. Let's see if Carson gets something to drive here. Three and two the count, runner at first base, one out. Clark looks at her wristband, has the pitch. And brings the next one home to Mode. Woo! Well, I don't know. I'm not the umpire, but. Yeah, the one, the one that was the second strike was similar to that one there. And yeah, they called out Faith Fairchild on a pitch that I thought was a ball. That one looked like it was right down the middle and it was called a strike or called a ball. And I don't know. At any rate, Collinsville has runners on first and second and one out. And coming up to the plate is going to be Allie Vilaf. Vilaf. Goes down, talks things over. 
with Jessica Schmidtling, the head coach for Collinsville. Emma Hilton comes and joins the fray as well. Keegan Edwards, the on-deck batter, also in that group. Clark had a coach come out and talk to her, and Clark is really just fiddling around with the uh, pitching rubber there, pointing to something she didn't like about it. But well, at least it's in the right spot this time. At least we believe it is. Allie Vilaf, ready to bat now. Allie wins a strikeout victim her first time up. Bottom of the fourth, 2 nothing in favor of Modern Day. One out for Collinsville, two runners on. Hilton on at second base as the courtesy runner. Carson Mode on at first. And Clark ready to pitch to Vila. She squares around to bunt and bunts it foul. Collinsville trying to move the runners into scoring position. As Vila looks down to Schmittling at third base, gets a new set of signs. Corners are playing in for the bunt. Vila ready for the next from Clark. That is a bunt, and it goes to the pitcher. Only throw is over to first base, and she does her job and moves the runners over. Up, All kinds of wide open space there. The shortstop was very close to third base. If it could have got past the pitcher, all the runners might have been able to run for days. Running for days. I like running for days. Two away, though, and so it is now up to Keegan Edwards. Edwards singled and made it to second base on an outfield error, and she looks at one inside. And that's called a strike. Man. <laughs> Tough strike zone here today. <clears throat> Edwards, looking for something to hit here. Here's the pitch. Strike called on the inside corner again. So now Clark and the Lady Knights, one pitch away from getting out of this inning. Second inning in a row that Collinsville has had runners on second and third. Here's the 0-2, swing and a miss, and down on strikes goes Edwards. And that's the way that the inning comes to a close. Two more runners stranded for Collinsville. That's five runners stranded on the afternoon for the Cayhawks. We will head now to the top of the fifth. Very fast-moving game we got going on here. Modern Day comes back to the plate, and we will tell you all about that endeavor after we come back from a commercial break here on the Cayhawks Sports Network. Lakeside Roofing in Collinsville. Let the professionals at Lakeside Roofing protect your most important investment, your home or business. Have the elements taken a toll on your roof system? Notice a leaking roof? Maybe it's time for a free roof inspection. Regular maintenance can extend the life of your roofing system by 10 years or more. Lakeside Roofing is your winning team for commercial and residential roofing systems. Lakeside All-Star Professionals have installed, repaired, and maintained hundreds of roofs on both sides of the river. Call Lakeside Roofing today at 618 644-2800 in Collinsville or 314-241-5253 or online at lakesideroofing.com. Choose experience, choose Lakeside. Todd Duke, Chris Kettler, back with you from the Collinsville Sports Complex. Top of the fifth inning. And... Hawks trying to keep things where they are. Right now it's 2 to nothing in favor of Modern Day. And here is Allison Willman, the second baseman. And the ball stays at home plate. And Bailey Dimmick throws down to first base, but she throws it off to the second base side, and Willman will reach on the throwing air. Hit that ball, and it landed literally an inch in front of the home plate. Dimmick did a good job picking it up, but her throw pulled Edwards off the bag. That it did. Back to the top of the order in Maddie Hill. She'll look at one outside. And that's a called strike. Maddie Hills singled and scored in the first. Grounded out to Fairchild at second in her last at bat. So modern day with a runner on first base. No one out. Here's the pitch. Swinging a shot to Rafalowski in center field. And she really wasn't going to break there at first. And then she realized it was a little bit more shallow than that and had to come in a couple of steps to make that play. A pretty good job of judging it. Could have got a step or two in a little earlier, but was able to make the catch. 
So the number two hitter comes up in Avery Trami, the left fielder, a strikeout victim in both plate appearances. First one swinging, second one looking. No, nope, we are going to have a different batter. That is going to be Taylor Robert, who was in the bullpen just a little while ago. Taylor Robert, number 14, at bat. So Robert will come in and hit and look at one outside. Taylor Robert on the year, batting 273 with a couple of runs batted in. All six of her hits have been singles. She bats from the left side. And the 1 0 pitch from Thomas. Popped up and out of play as Roberts was looking to slap that one down the line but got underneath it instead. Taylor Robert, a sophomore. And Thomas ready with the 1-1 and a swing and a miss at a ball outside. And Thomas now ahead in the count. One ball, two strikes. Runner at first base. That is Allison Willman. Reached on a throwing error by Bailey Dimmick behind home plate. Here's the next pitch. That one's outside. This time not swinging at it was Robert. Baseball team up 6-1 to one in the fourth. Nice to hear. At Granite City. Two and two the count. Next pitch from Marissa Thomas. Swing and a miss. And down on strikes is Robert. So the number two hitter in the order for modern day has struck out three times here today. Good job getting her to chase that pitch and gets her to strike out. Fifth strikeout of the game for Thomas. Here is Katie Hills who singled and scored and walked and was stranded in her two at bats. She's up there now with one runner on and there's a base hit. Out to right field, and that is off of the leg of Parlberg out there, and everybody's going to have a chance to run, and a run will score on the air, and that's the fourth error on the afternoon for Collinsville. Yeah, going to prove to probably be another un unearned run there. Pitcher number 33, that one was off of right fielder Parlberg, who making her first start. At least she did the, seen. Yeah, she did the right thing. She got down on one knee to stop that ball from getting by her, but then it hit her leg and kept going. Never know what kind of divots or ruts are out there on that field, too. That could have caused some havoc. First pitch into the next batter, which is Audrey Clark, the designated player who is now pitching. And it's a 3-0 lead in favor of Modern Day. Thomas would like to get out of this with no further damage being done. Had two outs and a runner on first and you know, base hit in an error. Allowed another run to score and there's another run just 60 feet away. One ball, one strike to count. And the next pitch is in there for a called strike to Clark. Clark. 0 for 2 coming up, popped up to the second baseman Fairchild in the first inning. That was the error after the pop-up was caught that allowed two runs to score. And a foul pop-up caught up against the fence by Carson Mode in her last at bat as that one is high and outside. 2 and 2 the count. Runner at third base, 2 away. Collinsville would like to strand that runner. As Thomas pitches, swinging a shot right back to her off of her glove and then past Faith Fairchild. So an RBI single by Audrey Clark will increase the modern day lead to four to nothing. First run coming off of a straight off of a hit. Not a series of errors. Just drives her right in. Still two outs, runner on at first, and up to the plate now is Avery Wobbles. Wobbles is one for two, grounded out to Fairchild at second to end that first inning, and then singled and was out on a force play at second base. That was in the fourth inning. Next pitch, swinging a shot, that's a base hit, and that's in the gap, and cutting it off, but Unable to contain it for a moment as Clark is going to throw or make it all the way home on the play. And an RBI single by Wobbles. 
didn't pick the ball up too cleanly in the outfield and a little slow getting it back in. Lots of hustle there, round and third. Run comes in to score all the way from first. So now five to nothing in favor of Modern Day. Runner at second. Still two away, all this coming with two outs. Emma DeCamper up to the plate now. DeCamper swings and sends one down the left field way, but that is out of play. DeCamper 0 for 2 on the afternoon with a pop-up and a strikeout. After player reached on an error, the next two made it out. Collinsville looked like they might get out of the inning with a runner on first base and two down, but back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back base hits have kept that from happening. Owen to the count to DeCamper. That one's outside and gets away from Demick, so that'll allow Wibbles to move over to third base on the passed ball. So now another runner in scoring position here for Modern Day. One ball, two strikes to count to DeCamper. And the next pitch from Thomas, swinging another foul ball out of play. All of a sudden, the bats of modern day coming alive here. Three straight hits with two outs. Thomas, who pitched in yesterday's game, doing yeoman's work here in the fifth inning. And the Kayhawks have another game tomorrow. That one's laced right up the middle. That's going to score another run. Ralph Olowski gets it back in and holds DeCamper to an RBI single. Yeah, they Hits keep coming here from Otter Day. Yeah. The baseball team extends their lead day to one in the fourth. Six to nothing now here in favor of Modern Day. And Lynn Shirley steps up to the plate. Shirley has flied out and reached on a fielder's choice. Takes one high. Seven hits now to go along with those six runs for Modern Day. Four of those hits have been in a row. Hills, Clark, Wubles, and DeCamper, all singles. That one stays high as well. This inning started off with an error. It should have been an out as Wilman. Had one that stayed at home plate. Demick threw just a little bit wide. Now a throw down the line. That's going to go all the way down in the corner. And on her way to second base is DeCamper. Two errors by Demick here in this inning. Trying to do too much there. Not going to be able to get that one. And the throw was high up over Edwards' head. Luckily, it didn't result in much more of the ball bouncing around or going to that tarp area. Yeah, Parlberg did a nice job of getting over there quickly and getting that ball, but a uh, walk now to Shirley. will put runners on at first and second, and the only batter not to bat in this inning, Carissa Rich, is coming up to the plate right now. That might spell the end of, of Thomas here as Vila runs in from left field and looks like she'll probably take over. Wait and see if Schmidtling's going to take the ball out of Thomas's hands here. Well, as Hilton takes a spot into, left, if into the outfield, it seems like yep. that's the case. So Vilaf is going to come in to pitch. We have a timeout and a pitching change, so we'll take a timeout as well. And we'll be back here in just a moment on the Kayhawks Sports Network. First National Bank of Waterloo. With over 100 years serving the Metro East. Visit First National Bank of Waterloo at their Maryville or Collinsville locations for all of your banking, mortgage, and lending needs. Why? Super low closing costs, low construction loan rates, and they do so much to support our local communities. When you need a loan, call the Collinsville team at First National Bank of Waterloo at 618 345 1121 or visit their Maryville or Collinsville locations or online at fnbwaterloo.bank. 
First National Bank of Waterloo, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Herald Square and Cold Herald, two great additions to the Collinsville landscape. Next to the old Herald Brewery and Distillery, Herald Square is a new outdoor multi-use event space in Collinsville. Concerts, fun and games, farmer markets, and so much more. Herald Square, a great space for Collinsville's future. And, just off the square's turf, Cold Herald's old-fashioned scooped ice cream, gelato, house-made recipes, and premium sourced product. If you're over 21, ask about the good stuff at Cold Herald's. Watch Collinsville grow. Herald Square and Cold Herald, two great new additions, only in Collinsville, Illinois. So Allie Veloff will come in from left field and take over the pitching duties for Marissa Thomas and Emma Hilton, who came in as a courtesy runner earlier, will now enter the game out in left field. And for Veloff, this is going to be her sixth time appearing in a game for Collinsville. She does have the one start we were here for last week and lost that game, so 0-1. And, and Veloff on the year, six strikeouts, 17 walks. And the first batter that she will face is Carissa Rich. She'll do so with runners on first and second and two away. Vilaf ready with the pitch and it's inside, ball one. Seems like Vilaf could be like a power strikeout pitcher, but it's just about like crowning it all in as she seems to be a little wild and tough finding the zone sometimes. Here's the next pitch, swing and a miss. In on the hands of Carissa Rich who singled and was stranded in the second and grounded out to Fairchild back in the fourth. Vila, just a freshman though, so she's uh, getting some good important work here at the varsity level. That one's behind the batter. Nice job by Dimmick to keep that one from going back any farther. And now the throw out to Vila in the pitcher circle gets away from her. Runners stay put though. Runners on at first and second, two away, but Four runs have scored here in this fifth inning. Six to nothing in favor of Modern Day. Swinging a high fly ball. On the move is Rafalowski and in center field. She'll haul it down, ranging to her right. And the inning comes to a close, but not before four runs come across the plate to add on to the two runs that Modern Day scored back in the top of the first inning. So we will head now to the home half of the fifth. And Modern Day extends that lead to six to nothing, and we're back with the home half of the fifth inning after a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Herald Square and Cold Herald, two great additions to the Collinsville landscape. Next to the old Herald Brewery and Distillery, Herald Square is a new outdoor multi-use event space in Collinsville. Concerts, fun and games, farmer markets, and so much more. Herald Square, a great space for Collinsville's future. And just off the square's turf, Cold Herald's old-fashioned scooped ice cream gelato, house-made recipes, and premium sourced product. If you're over 21, ask about the good stuff at Cold Herald's. Watch Collinsville grow. Herald Square and Cold Herald, two great new additions, only in Collinsville, Illinois. The Collinsville Area Community Foundation is our community's charitable foundation. We connect people, support programs, and guide resources to help our community thrive. Our board is made up of local leaders that donate their time and expertise to identify opportunities for long-term community impact in and around Collinsville. Find out more about scholarships, grants, and ways to give back to the city we love by visiting CollinsvilleFoundation.com. Back here at the Collinsville Sports Complex. And Collinsville now trailing six to nothing and running out of time as we have reached the bottom of the fifth inning. And for Collinsville, it is Lily Parlberg who will lead things off. And first pitch to Parlberg is a foul ball, Lily. Only has one at bat. Reached base with a little base hit in her only other at bat, but was stranded at second. Edwards and Parlberg were stranded at third and second, respectively, in that inning. Here's the 0 1 pitch from Clark outside. Ball one, one ball, one strike to count. It'll be Parlberg, then back to the top of the order, and Lexi Rafalowski and Katie Bardwell here in the home half of the fifth. 
Clark. Ready with another pitch. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Stays a little low. Ball two. Clark looks at that wristband. Has the pitch that's called from the dugout, and here comes the 2-1 to Parlberg. Swinging a foul ball that would have been hitting me in the face if it wasn't for that backstop. Well, there's a window here, too. That also helps. Two and two the count. One, two, one. One, two, one. That means something to Clark. She knows what it means, and here comes the pitch. And a foul ball back to the screen again. Parlberg. Digging back in there. 2-2 two, two is the count against her. Clark. Ready with that 2-2 two, two pitch, and here it is. Ooh, Outside. Good. And Parlberg says, I didn't swing, and the umpire behind the first base bag agrees. Yeah, that was a good eye there. Good job of laying off that one. Looked like it might have been one she might have needed to fight off, foul off. So full count. Pitch from Clark on the way. Right back to her, and then it gets away from her, but she has enough time to turn around, pick it up, and in time for the out. And Lexi Rafalowski now up to the plate. One away, bases empty for Lexi Rafalowski. 0 for 1 on the afternoon. She did have a sacrifice bunt. That was in the third inning, but she flew out to the left fielder, Trame, in her first at bat. Clark, ready with the pitch to the Cahawk center fielder, and that one just misses. Need to get that bat going for Lexi here, batting 294 coming in. Usually one of the better hitters for Collinsville. Taking a little while to get going. Maybe she needs the weather to heat up. That's it. Yeah. Weather's going to heat up, and she'll get going here. She'll heat up. But she did her job last at bat. Yeah. Moving the runners over, having them in scoring position for the Bats of Demick and Bardwell. Yep, unfortunately, neither could do the job to get anyone home. Swinging a pop fly, testing out once again Avery Trammy out in left field, and for the second time this afternoon, Rafalowski flies out to left. Trammy did a good job of getting into it, but she just kind of didn't really get over to her right too much to get enough to get in it. Nearly had the sticker glove out to get that ball. So Bardwell. A strikeout victim in her two plate appearances. Is up there with two outs and the base is empty. Clark's ready to pitch and here it comes in the dirt. Bounces in front of home plate. Clark ready with another. And here it comes to Bardwell swinging a shot to center field. That's a base hit. Couple of innings too late, but we'll take the hit. Yeah, we'll take the hit. Good piece of hitting there. On something she can drive a little yeah, bit to the outfield. Four, would have been nicer. Would have been glad. Two third, couple innings ago. Yep, third hit of the afternoon for Collinsville. They had three hits yesterday in the 16 to one loss to Belleville West. And now Bailey Dimmick, who had two of those hits yesterday, including a home run and a double. Steps up to the plate with Bardwell on at first base and two outs. Swing, well, she almost swung. Stayed low, ball one. <clears throat> Dimmick from the left side. Awaits the 1-0 from Clark, here it is. Strike called on the outside corner. That'll even things out at one and one. Baseball team up in Granite, up 8-1 to one in the fifth. You got volleyball tomorrow, and I know they were playing an added game with Afton today. And the pitch. They added a game? Well, I guess sort of an added game. I, guess they originally had, I was told they originally had Jabot on yeah, the schedule. Yeah, I thought it was Jabot was on my schedule. Jabot had dropped their team, so we picked up Afton. I mean, it's been on the schedule for at least a week or so, but not added today or anything. 
Strike on the inside portion of the plate now to Demick. So two and two the count. Bardwell on it first. Looks like they are finished over on the JV field. And we can't get that score. Yeah. We will certainly try. Clark ready with the 2-2 pitch to Demick. And here it comes. Swing and a shot into the gap. That's going to get down and roll all the way to the wall. Bardwell, round second. She's being waved home. And Collinsville is on the board as they get their first run here in the bottom of the fifth on a RBI double by Bailey Demick. Can't shut her down all game. Great piece of hitting there. Really drove that ball. Yeah, she did. She tattooed it. Maybe on a day with some wind blowing out. That might have gotten on board the fence. So the Cahawks get on the board. And we'll at least avoid getting shut out. But their job is to come back into this one and try to erase five more runs. So Stone will come back. So Stone will come up to the plate with a runner on at second. And Addy on the afternoon has walked both times. Forced out at second base back in the second and was left at third base. Well, Emma Hilton was left at third base. In the fourth, this one's outside, ball one. Faith Fairchild waits on deck. Demick is at second base after an RBI double. Clark ready with the next. Right down the middle. One ball, one strike to count. Two outs, runner on second base. Collinsville trails by five. We're in the home half of the fifth. Stone looking for something to drive here. Strike called on the outside corner. One ball, two strikes to count to the Cahawk designated player. Wears number 99 on her jersey. And the one-two pitch from Clark on the way. Inside, two and two. Drive something here, at least try to make some kind of contact on this one. Drive endemic. Here is the 2 2. Oh, yes. strike three called on the outside corner, but Collinsville does get a run home. She didn't like it. No, I would uh, tend to agree with her as well. Third strikeout for Clark since she took over for Kaler, but in the inning, Collinsville does get one run across the plate on a couple of base hits. And one more runner left on base for Collinsville. Cahawks have now left six base runners on the base paths, but they got to run across, but only the one. Six to one in favor of Modern Day as we now head to the top of the sixth inning. Modern Day with another opportunity to add on to their five-run lead, and we'll see if they can do that when we come back from our commercial break here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Looking for good food, good times, and good people? Look no further than the Bridge Inn in Caseyville. Just over the bridge from the Cahawk Stadium, Bridge Inn features a friendly and courteous staff that serves up the coldest drinks and the best food in the Metro East. Lunch and dinner is available daily, with a breakfast menu every Saturdays and Sunday morning. And don't forget about fantastic Fish Fry Fridays. Bridge Inn also features pool tournaments on most weekends and a gaming area for the over-21 crowd. Bridge Inn in Caseyville. Check them out at 519 North Main Street in Caseyville. Call for carryout orders at 618-344-3530. The best is yet to come at the Bridge Inn in Caseyville. 618-344-3530. Back here at the Collinsville Sports Complex. My name is Todd Duke. On the other microphone is Mr. Chris Kettler. Six to one in favor of modern day as we have moved on to the top of the sixth inning. And Ali Vilaf is back in the pitcher circle. Emma Hilton is back in left field. And up to the plate, it is Allison Willman who led off the four-run fifth inning by reaching on an error. And then the floodgates opened up after two outs after her. Four straight hits by Modern Day. Plated four more runs. A couple of errors thrown in there as well. 
And for Wilman, that error, and she struck out in her only other at bat. Pitch, Vila throws it high. One ball, one strike to count. Back to the top of the order in Maddie Hills after this at bat by Wilman. Vilath, ready with a 1-1. Strike called on the inside corner. One ball, two strikes to count now to Allison Wilman, the second baseman for Modern Day. And the next delivery, that one gets away from everyone and was inside, now leaving things out at two and two. The way she winds through and then releases the ball is very interesting looking. Sometimes you don't know exactly where it's getting released, so that's going to be tough for the hitters. Next pitch by Vila is behind the batter. But then that stuff like that happens yeah. too where it just doesn't follow, follow through enough on it and pitch stays wild. But when she can get everything behind it and in the zone, there, there's some good pitches in there. And that one's outside. Oh, did she offer at it? Yes. And the oh. first base umpire says no, she did not. So a walk to Wilman will put her on base for the second inning in a row. Well, something come through the zone there, and she just about swung through it there. Barely held up. Could have run her up. Well, back to the top of the order we go. And Maddie Hills. First pitch to Hills. A little bit high. Maddie on the afternoon. Singled and scored in the first. Grounded out in the third and flew out to Ralph Olowski in the center field in the fifth. Runner at first, nobody out. Pitch, swing, and a chance for a double play ball. Fairchild will throw over to first base, let the runner have second. Didn't even look that way. No, did not but at all. At least make sure you get the sure out. And the easy out, just going to your left. Yeah, she would have had the glove and then twist her body around and make a throw over to second base. So, as you mentioned, she took the easy out, and that will bring up Taylor Robert, Robert in her loan at bat, struck out after she came in to take the place of Avery Trami. And that one gets away, and that's a big ball that bounced a good 10 feet in front of home plate. At least. And it wasn't even centered to home plate either. It was way to the left as we look at it. So a wild pitch moves a runner into scoring position, and a strike called to Robert. I think I forgot to put Robert in there in left field, didn't I? I did. So Rafalowski flew out to Robert in that last half of inning, not Trami. Two and one the count to Taylor Robert. Vila pitches, slapped down the third base side, but foul, they will even things out at two and two. Katie Hills waits on deck. Allison Willman is down at third base with one away. Vila pitches, swinging a chance and a backhand for Bardwell with the long throw after she had to stop running was too late, and Wilman comes home on an infield single by Taylor Robert. Just enough in the hole there. Bardwell did a good job of getting to it and making a good hard throw across the diamond, but not definitely not in time. Here is Katie Hills. Hills from the left side. Waits the pitch from Vilaf outside. Demick stretches that arm out there and snags that ball before it goes back to the fence. Katie Hills on the afternoon, two for two with a walk, two singles, two runs scored. Pitch from Vila, high. Ball two. Seven to one now. Collinsville got a run in the bottom of the fifth, but Modern Day has already gotten that one right back. Dimmick with another nice stop behind home plate. And quickly, Vilaf is in a 3-0 count against Katie Hills. Yeah, three pitches that have 
missed all over the place. Hills awaits the 3-0 and takes a four-pitch walk. Next up, pitcher number 33, Audrey Clark. Audrey Clark started off this game as the designated player is now the pitcher. She'll come in and see what she can do against the V-Lift. Runners on first and second, one out, one run already home here. And the pitch from V-Lift to Clark in there for a strike. There you go, probably the best pitch she's thrown. JV team lost to Jerseyville, 13 to one. There you go, we were able to get the score. That one's a called oh. strike two, but pops off the glove of Demick. And the second passed ball on the afternoon for Bailey has allowed runners to move up. It was really tailing away there, but Demick should have been able to get the glove on it. She's a little crossed up. So now runners in scoring position for Clark and only one out. 0-2 pitch on the way. Strike three called. Clark didn't like that one at all. Vilaf on did. One. Clark came up on that one way early, not expecting it to drop in. She bailed out of there, but it was a strike. Yeah. First strike out of the game for Vilaf. Go along with five for Marissa Thomas. That'll bring up Avery Woobles. And Woobles looks at one a little low and outside for ball one. Avery on the afternoon has grounded out and has back-to-back -back singles. The last time she singled, she knocked in a run and came around to score herself. Here is the next pitch, swinging a high pop fly, and that one's going to cross up Emma Hilton out there in left field, and that's going to allow another run to come home. And with a stand-up double is Avery Wibbles. Next up, third baseman, number 10, Emma DeCamp. And she like, knocks in a run. I mean, it was definitely a fly ball off the bat, but it didn't look like it was going to go that far. Kept sailing over there, and Hilton maybe couldn't find it there because there's kind of a shaded area there, and then she kind of came back in light and then had to go back out to the shade. So two outs, runner at second, another couple of runs in. Nine to one now in favor of Modern Day. And the batter is Emma DeCamper. And here's the 0-1, strike called. DeCamper on the afternoon is one for three with a RBI single, a strikeout, and a pop-up. 0-2 oh, the count. Avery, or excuse me, Vilaf trying to get out of this inning with just the three runs scored. That one's up high. And the next delivery, swinging a pop-up on the infield. Faith Fairchild is underneath it and has it for the out, but three more runs come across the plate here for Modern Day. And they extend that lead out to 9-1. to one. As we move now to the bottom half of the sixth inning, Collinsville has a lot more work to do than they did when they first started this sixth inning. So we'll tell you all about the next Cahawks at bat when we come back from commercial break here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition in Pontoon Beach provides complete commercial, industrial, and residential demolition and excavating services. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition is family owned and operated by former Cahawks since 1980 and have over four decades serving the Metro East. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition is your choice for quality and experienced work at a reasonable price. Schaefer's just jobs of any size, whether digging for water and sewer lines, site preparation, or building demolition. Schaefer's can do it all. Schaefer's Excavating and Demolition also sells backfill, topsoil, loam, and other materials. Licensed, bonded, and insured. From earth moving and land clearing to building and demolition and road construction to septic and sewer system work. Call the experienced crew at Schaefer Excavating and Demolition. 618-931-6237. No one likes a dirty house. It's work that almost no one wants to do. Why not get someone to do that work for you? Kara Gray with Rags to Riches Cleaning Service would love to take that task off your to-do list. Kara is a homegrown Collinsville High School graduate 
and the owner of Rags to Riches. From floors to ceilings, from baseboards to light fixtures, Rags to Riches can clean them all. No job is too big or too small. Call Kara Gray at Rags to Riches Cleaning Service to schedule a free estimate today at 618-979-9634 or visit Rags to Riches Cleaning Service on Facebook. Faith Fairchild will come in and lead things off against a new pitcher, and we're already a little bit familiar with her as Taylor Robert, who has already come in and batted a couple of times, will now take over in the pitching circle for Clark. And the next pitch is inside for another called strike. So one ball, one strike, the count to Faith Fairchild, who reached on a fielder's choice in the second. And she was stranded and got caught looking at a third strike Back in the fourth inning, this one's outside. And for Taylor Robert, this is her third game pitch. She started one already. One and one on the year with a 1.75 earned run average. Robert has eight strikeouts to go along with seven walks so far on the year. Swing and a foul ball. And that'll keep the count right where it is at two and two. So, Kayox have an uphill battle here, and they're going to have their hands full tomorrow when Edwardsville comes to town. Edwardsville always tough in the world of softball. Full count, and after that one is a bit outside to Faith Fairchild. Fairchild, Mode, and Vila here in this inning. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Nine to one in favor of Modern Day. Swinging a little pop fly, and that's into the glove. Of the shortstop, Maddie Hills. That was a nice play on a little bit of a knuckleball as it got out there to her, but she stuck with it. Not the tallest shortstop out there. No. And she said a couple like that today were just barely snagged it before it got up over her. Carson Moe up to the plate now, facing Robert, and the pitch is just a little bit outside. Carson on the afternoon is 0 for 1 with a walk and a pop up. Need a bunch of base runners is what we need. And there's a pitch back to Robert. Knocks it down with her glove and has plenty of time to pick it up and throw out Carson Mode. And quickly there are two away. Up, there is Allie Vilaf who started off playing in left field. Now in the pitcher circle. Two away for Allie who is 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a sacrifice bunt. She digs in. She's ready to go. Didn't waste any time. Nope. Pitcher against pitcher now. Vila from the right side. And the pitch is a little high. <clears throat> excuse me. 2-0. Oh. Or excuse me, you call that a strike? Yep. I can't hear him sometimes because I'm speaking, and then he has a big delay by putting up that right arm for the strike call, swinging a miss on that one. Yep, comes right back with the same pitch there, and that forces Vila to... Swing at that one, misses it. He's always about five seconds behind after he calls a strike before he throws up that right arm for the hand signal for a strike. Swing and a pop-up. That's going to go out to Weebles out in right field and a 1-2-3 inning for Taylor Robert and the modern-day Lady Knights on the defensive side of things. So things are getting kind of late here as we have moved on to the top of the seventh inning. And it's nine to one now in favor of Modern Day. And we'll be back with the top half of the seventh inning right after we take a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Looking for a great place to watch the game with your crew? Look no further than the Lucky Fox Sports Bar in Uptown Collinsville. The Lucky Fox shows Collinsville Kayhawk sports on the big screen. Plus, UFC fights, boxing, Cardinals and Blues, and all of the NFL games with the NFL ticket and enough TVs, you'll be sure to find the game you want. And the food? How about Taco Tuesdays, Wing Wednesdays, plus burgers and sandwiches, pizza, steak, and more, including great drink specials and the coldest beer in town. Plus, they have an in-house DJ on Friday and Saturday nights. Dine in and catch a game or order carry out with the Lucky Fox. The Lucky Fox Sports Bar, 118 East Main Street in Uptown Collinsville. Open daily at 11 a.m., 
Check out the Lucky Fox Facebook page for daily specials. The Lucky Fox, 618-223-1948. Lynn Shirley will lead things off here in the top of the seventh inning for Modern Day. Lady Knights comfortably in front here, 9-1. to one. As we have potentially the final inning of this contest right in front of us right now. Shirley on the afternoon reached on a fielder's choice, walked, and a fly out to Rafalowski. Pitch by Vilif is high, 2-0. Same score in Grand City, 9-1. to That's Kayox leading over in the baseball game. That's nice. Top of the sixth. We are slightly ahead of them. Slightly. Next pitch. Outside, ball three. Bottom of the order here, Shirley, Rich, and Willman for modern day. Sun starting to go down. And the next delivery is up high, a four-pitch walk. Mm. Well, don't want to see a leadoff walk. Next up, catcher number 23, Carissa Rich. There is Carissa Rich, who is one for three on the afternoon with a single, a ground out, and a fly out. Vilaf and the infielders would like a double play ball. Here's the pitch. Pops out of the glove of Demick, but not far enough for the runner to advance. Five straight balls. We all are still looking for the zone coming out of here this inning. And the next pitch to the modern day catcher is high and outside, so it's six straight out of the strike zone. Vilip needs to bring one in. Let her put it in play. Here is the 2-0. High, 3-0. Vilip ready with that 3-0 pitch. Here it is. Strike on the outside yeah. corner. Just brought it down a bit. It started to tail. Outside a bit, but gets the corner. Now she knows where to put it. Let's put it there again. Here's the pitch. Swinging a foul ball over the press box. Back into the parking lot. Vilaf has a new ball. Runner on it first. Nobody out. And the pitch on the way, high, and back-to-back -back walks. Have put runners on at first and second with nobody out. And here is Allison Willman. Willman. Walked and scored in her last at bat. Reached on an error and scored in the fifth inning. Before that, she was a strikeout victim of Marissa Thomas's back in the second. Pitch, a little low. Second walk issued here in this inning by Vilaf. Third in the game since she came in. And the next delivery, high and outside again. <clears throat> the Cavs already trailed by eight. Don't want to make it any worse. 2-0 pitch from Vilaf. To the number nine hitter, Allison Willman is on the way, and that one's high and outside as well. So 3-0. and oh. yeah. As Vilaf having a hard time throwing strikes here in the seventh inning. And no matter what, you're going to have to find your way out of this inning. You have to get three outs. Yep. Ten-run rule ain't going to. There's a strike. Come into effect. As Collinsville is the home team at this point in the seventh inning. Yep. Vilaf, ready with the 3-1. Swing and a miss. Battles back again. Went, fell behind 3-0 in the last batter. Two strikes. Just missed the walk on the last pitch. 
Here's a full count delivery, and that one is got her. Strike three called outside. Could have went either way, maybe with yeah. that one. Second time that Wilman has struck out. Second strike out of the game for Vila. Back to the top of the order, and Maddie Hills. So runners on first and second. Maddie, after singling and scoring in the first, has gone 0 for 3 cents. Fly out and two ground outs, both ground outs to Faith Fairchild at second base. Do that again, maybe get a double play to get out of this inning. Bardwell playing way off the second base bag though, so that would be a tall, tough task to ask for. Here's the pitch, outside, strike one. One ball, one strike to the count. Vila, ready with the 1-1. Here it comes, high and outside, ball two. <laughs> Runners on first and second, one out. We're in the top of the seven. Nine one in favor of modern day. Vila ready with the two one. Strike called. Two and two. That looked a little high and outside to me as well. Yeah, he's giving her just about anything that's yeah. close enough. That one's over the batter's head and another full count here. This time to Maddie Hill as the shortstop. She's made a couple of nice plays out there at shortstop. One out, runners on first and second. We're in the top of the seventh. Here's the next pitch to Hill. Swing and she stays alive. Didn't want to take any chances. Yeah, she knew she couldn't leave anything close enough. Vila ready with another full count pitch and a walk. Bases loaded. All three Lady Knights out there on the base paths have been given free passes. So Shirley over to third, Rich down to second, and Hills... Now over at first, bases loaded, one out. And here is Taylor Robert, who had an RBI single in her last plate appearance. She came in as a replacement for Avery Tromme. Struck out her first time up and swings and misses at this offering. Got to come into her, nowhere to put her. Vilas, ready with another. That one. Nice stop by Demick. She had to range out to her left to keep that one from going back to the fence. Oh, wind blew it. And Vila ready with a 1-1 delivery. Here it comes. High. Ball two. Taylor Robert stands in from the left side and takes one on the outside corner for a called strike. Two and two. How about the old one, two, three double play? Pitch. Swing and a shot down the third base line, but that's foul. Just foul. Yeah, by about a foot. Really can't see any line anymore. Really should basically faded away. Yeah. I don't think there ever was any there. Well, maybe a few days ago. Yeah, there w they were there, but rain probably didn't help. You could go back and repaint <coughs> them. Maybe they will they will in time for the next game or future game. Could be. That one's outside. And a full two. count. Nowhere to put her on the base pads. They are full of Lady Knights. One away, bases loaded. Nine to one in favor of modern day. Vila has to throw a strike and does so and swinging right through it was Taylor Robert, second strike out of Robert this afternoon. Oh, she ran up through the box there to swing at that one. Too tough to hit it there doing that. She needs to just stay put and yeah. try to find a way to drive it. So here is Katie Hills, who has reached base in all four of her plate appearances today and came around to score three times. 
Two singles, two walks. So officially, two for two. 1-0 oh the count. Here's the next pitch. That one's in there for a strike. One and one. Sun is getting a little low in the sky. Shadows are starting to creep in. Yeah, basically all the left field there is in the shadow. Oh, that one goes all the way back to the fence and bounces off the fence and it goes through the umpire's legs. And no one could move. Umpire just ducked down and yeah. held on for Held on to don't know, hope he didn't get hit. Two and one the count to the batter. Didn't want to get in the catcher's way, so he just stayed in the one spot. Here is the two one pitch. Swinging a foul ball back to the screen. Two and two. So Vila one strike away from getting out of this inning, despite walking the bases full. Two two the count. Two outs. Bases loaded, and the pitch outside, full count again. Vilith has done that a lot this inning. Fourth straight batter, fifth straight batter, I believe. Yeah. Looking for a strike. Vilith ready to go. Pitch, swinging a high fly ball. Will send Emma Hilton heading toward foul territory, but that is going to be a foul ball. I think that's Paul Burke out there and left now. Is it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? And Aubrey Mason is in right field. So a long strike and the next delivery. Swing and a miss. And nice job by Vila to get out of that inning. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to end it. Three base runners stranded for modern day in that particular inning. So we will head now to the home half of the seventh. Collinsville trailing by eight runs. We'll see what the Cahawks can do as they come to the plate here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And we'll be back to tell you all about it on the Cahawks Sports Network. Are you in need of a new mailbox to go with your new home? How about a new mailbox to replace your old one? Look no further than Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes in Collinsville. From economy to custom, Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes can create a mailbox that suits your needs. Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes is licensed and insured. They use only high-quality materials and offer a satisfaction guarantee policy. Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes can also make your very own axe throwing set, hanging or standing. Whether you need that axe throwing set or a new mailbox, you need Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes in Collinsville. For more information, get a hold of Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes at 618-680-0208 or online at needanewmailbox.com. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. Jason Regg, your Benjamin F. Edwards financial advisor, understands this. That's why Jason Regg is a proud supporter of your Collinsville Cahawks and the Cahawks Sports Network, as well as the Cahawks Educator of the Month Award. For all of your investment needs, see Financial Advisor and Investment Vice President Jason Regg at the Benjamin F. Edwards office in Collinsville, located at 1008 Vandalia Street, or call Jason Regg at 618-223-5215 or visit BenjaminFEdwards.com. Benjamin F. Edwards, member SIPC. Keegan Edwards leads things off here in the bottom of the seventh for Collinsville, and the first two pitches are in there for strikes. And Edwards in an 0-2 hole. And the next pitch, swinging a foul ball back to the screen. Edwards has singled and struck out in this game. It'll be Edwards, Parlberg back to the top of the order in Alexi Rothalowski. And hopefully more batters to follow if Collinsville wants to get back into this one. That's a big uphill battle to climb. Eight runs down here in the last half inning for the home team. Swing and a miss. And Edwards swung at that ball. It was about two feet off the plate. Next up, did a good job of following the one off before that, but that one just way outside there. First strikeout for Taylor Robert. And here is Parlberg. And first pitch, she takes it high and outside. Parlberg on the day as a single and a ground out. Collinsville's lone run came in the bottom of the fifth. 
But in the next half inning, the top of the sixth, Modern Day got not only that run back, but added on a couple of more. Two runs in the first for Modern Day, four in the fifth, three in the sixth. Baseball up 10 to four, going to the seventh over in Grand City. Nice to hear. Two and one the count to Parlberg, who started off in right field, now playing left field. And the pitch from Roberts, swing and a miss. Two and two. Swinging a pop fly, and this one's heading out toward foul territory, but a nice play over there by third baseman DeCamper, right in front of the fence, Next up. is the second out of the inning. Was hoping it would get out of, out of play there. It didn't happen. Stayed well, in play and good hustle to get there and make the catch. Alexi Rafalowski up. She has flight out twice to left field. In between those two pop-ups, a sacrifice bunt. First pitch is in there for a strike. JV Hawks lost to Granite City 9-5. And a swing and a base hit for Rafalowski. She's continuing to hit the ball out to left field. First two times was into the glove of the left fielder. This time it's a base hit. That is the fifth base hit of the afternoon for Collinsville. So a runner on at first base, two away for Katie Bardwell. Bardwell will get at least one more at bat. Katie on the afternoon, back-to-back -back strikeouts in the first and the third, and then she singled home, or singled and scored. The lone run for Collinsville in the fifth. She singled, and Bailey Dimmick, who is on deck, brought her home with a double to the gap out in left center field. Here's the 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss by Bardwell. 0-2, and, and Taylor and company, one strike away from ending this game. Well, down to the last strike. Gex just didn't get the timely hitting early. Could have got some runs. Here's the next pitch, swing and a foul ball. That mm. keeps Bardwell alive. Okay. Thought the umpire might have taken that. <laughs> yeah, I thought it hit off of his ankle or something for a moment. He's okay. 0-2 the count, two outs. Rafalowski on at first base. And the pitch outside, and Rafalowski runs. That ball is going to go out to center field. And a stolen base for Rafalowski. That would be her eighth stolen base on the year. She has not been caught yet this year. First stolen base of this game for Collinsville. Didn't want to get anybody thrown out on the bases. Just did what he can to move the runners over. And another foul ball that stays up at the home plate area. We'll keep the count right where it is at one and two. Hawks battling all the way to the end here. Might at least get another run on the board. See if Bardwell can accommodate. One ball, two strikes to count to Bardwell, the Hawks shortstop. Rafalowski down at second base. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and down on strikes goes Bardwell, and that is going to do it as Modern Day holds on and wins this game by a final score of 9-1 to one to drop the Hawks to 1-7 and seven on the year. And that takes us to our post-game coverage brought to you by Chiropractic Works in Collinsville, owned and operated by Dr. Chris McCluskey. He and his crew are focused on helping as many people as possible live high-quality lives all through chiropractic care and wellness. You can visit Dr. McCluskey at Chiropractic Works in Collinsville, 410 Regency Center, just off of the Beltline Road in Collinsville. Give them a call at 618-343-3602 or online at chiropracticworkscollinsville.com. Post-game show, that's what comes your way next on the Cahawk Sports Network. The Ortho Gold TRT tissue regeneration machine is revolutionary new technology. It's known as a shockwave machine. In the hospital setting, it's lithotripsy. The machine looks sort of like an ultrasound head, but it's much different technology. It drives sound waves into tissue at 3,500 miles an hour. It's a three to five minute non-invasive treatment. This is revolutionary technology. It's great for acute, which means you know injured uh, tissue. Uh, new injuries per se, also chronic conditions. We have many people who have 
canceled knee replacements and shoulder replacements and treated lots of plantar fasciitis, foot, ankle problems. Overall, the OrthoGold TRT uh, soft wave machine is revolutionary technology. We've been very excited to bring it to our practice and we've already helped a tremendous amount of people with it and we're looking forward to helping a, a, a lot more. We love to have you come work for the city of Collinsville. We have many positions available from seasonal jobs to full-time opportunities in many of our departments. From police and fire to Gateway Center, parks and recreation and City Hall. Our employees enjoy great benefits like comprehensive medical plans, paid time off, tuition reimbursement and more. Visit the city's website, collinsvilleil.org to apply and learn more about working for the city of Collinsville. Looking for a more upscale place to have a few drinks and some great food? Look no further than the Speakeasy Parlor in Maryville. Come inside for some one-of-a-kind crafted cocktails and some elevated bar food that highlights fresh ingredients. Then, try your luck in the private slot machine room. And don't forget to check out the Speakeasy sister company, Plan Shop Live, just three doors down. Plan Shop Live is a health-focused lunch cafe open Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 3. Speakeasy Parlor. 2713 North Center Street in Maryville. Open seven days a week with happy hour specials during the week from 5 to 7 p.m. Speakeasy Parlor in Maryville, 618-205-3540. All Pro Tees in Caseyville is your place for custom apparel and has been for over 20 years now. Why? All Pro Tees can handle any size project, big or small, and they specialize in large group orders. At All Pro Tees, Quality is number one on their list of priorities, as is evident by their excellent service staff. Did we mention All Pro Tees has over 20 years of experience? They can even help with fundraisers and event merchandising for your group. And of course, All Pro Tees is your destination for everything Collinsville Cayhawks. So for all of your apparel needs, for civic groups, sports teams, business outings, or even a family reunion, your apparel needs stop at All Pro Tees. All Pro Tees in Caseyville at 2240 South Morrison Avenue. Online at allprotees.com. Right across the street from Cahawk Stadium. All Pro Tees, 618-344-2200. Looking for a new place to catch the game with cold drinks and great food? Look no further than 1101 Bar and Grill in Caseyville. 1101 Bar and Grill features pizza, burgers, wraps, and salads, plus seven large screen TVs to catch the latest Cahawk games and all the pro sports across the spectrum, plus all the college football and basketball you can handle. 1101 Bar and Grill in Caseyville, 1101 Caseyville Road, right across the street from Cahawk Stadium. Call 1101 Bar and Grill for carryout orders at 618-223-1332. My name is Rayshon Taylor, collegiate basketball player at SIUE. At the end of January, I had an ACL injury. I've been searching for ways to come back as best as I can uh, after the construction. Dr. Chris introduced me to the soft wave machine. I'm gonna be honest, at first I was kind of scared because I didn't want it to shock me and hurt me too bad. And I had heard something about it and I did my research on it and it turns out it didn't actually hurt. It just uh, was a good pain. It just finding where it hurts to promote the healing and that's exactly what it did. I've actually had the surgery before. This time, I feel like I'm back on my feet quicker, much faster. I'm much stronger than I was up to this point last time. And honestly, I feel like I could play right now. I'm excited to get back on the court. Thankful that Dr. Chris introduced me to this. Welcome you back into the Chiropractic Works post game show here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Modern Day wins this one here this afternoon by a final score of 9 to 1. Lady Knights had nine runs on eight hits, one error they committed, and they left nine base runners on base. Collinsville got the one run in the bottom of the fifth inning on five base hits in the game. They committed six errors in this game, did Collinsville, and they left seven base runners on base. That is going to do it for us here today. These two teams, or excuse me, Collinsville will be back here tomorrow uh, against Southwestern Conference foe Edwardsville. Zach Roseman and Chris Kettler will have that call for you on the Cahawk Broadcast Club Student Network channel on YouTube. I will be out at Belleville East High School for a little boys volleyball action as Collinsville takes on the Lancers out at Belleville East. So a big thank you to Emma Hilton joining us 
in the pregame interview. Another big thank you to Chris Keller, as always, joining us on the other microphone. My name is Todd Duke, and until tomorrow night from Belleville East, everyone enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.